Hi, my dear students and to all the grade 8 students all over the world and all over the Philippines. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tin May. At syempre, ang kasama mo muli sa inyong paglalakbay dito sa mundo ng syensa. But of course, before we proceed with this lesson, if you are new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in science. And syempre, kasama na rin ang research. Box, they are using the PEIS or what we call Feebox Earthquake Intensity Scale. So, ito yung ginagamit nila to identify the intensity, the level of intensity of the earthquake. Magnitude, it is the energy released by an earthquake at the focus. It is calculated from earthquakes recorded by an instrument called seismograph. While intensity, it is the strength of an earthquake perceived and felt by people in a certain locality. Intensity is generally higher near the epicenter. Now, let us talk about the PEIS or the Feebox Earthquake Intensity Scale. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or the FEBOX uses the PEIS or the FEBOX Earthquake Intensity Scale to describe the intensity of earthquakes in the Philippines. PEIS or the FEBOX Earthquake Intensity Scale We have 10 intensity. Intensity 1, it is known as scarcely perceptible. When we say intensity 1, perceptible to people under favorable circumstances. Delicately balanced objects are disturbed slightly. Still water in containers oscillates slowly. So, hindi pa masyadong malakas ang intensity na to. Intensity 2, this is slightly felt. As you can see in the picture, the family uh, suddenly... Uh, the family is surprised for a sudden movement of the uh, light above them. So, felt by few individuals at rest indoors. Hanging objects swing slightly. Still, water in containers oscillates noticeably. So, medyo napapansin na ng konti. Pero hindi pa ganun kalakas. Intensity 3, this is weak. But as you can see in the reactions of, the, uh, of these people, so, kita nyo na na nagkaroon na ng kaunting uh, lalong mas naramdaman. Felt by many people in there, especially in upper floors of buildings. Vibration is felt like one passing of a light truck. Dizziness and NSA are experienced by some people. Hanging objects swing moderately. Still, water in containers oscillates moderately. Intensity 4 is moderately strong. Ayan, kita nyo na kung masyado nang malakas yung paggalaw nung, nung nakahang na object sa taas. Okay, at medyo nagulat na talaga sila. This is felt generally by people indoors and by some people outdoors. Light sleepers are awakened. Vibration is felt like a, a passing of heavy truck. Hanging objects swing considerably. The dinner plates, glasses, windows, and doors rattle. Now, intensity 4. This is moderately strong. So, medyo may kalakasan na. Floors and walls of wood frame buildings creak. Okay, standing motor cars may rock slightly. Liquids in containers are slightly disturbed. Water in containers oscillate strongly. And the rumbling sound may sometimes be heard. Now, let's proceed with intensity 5. So, intensity 5, this is strong. Okay? So, for low, ito naman yung pwede natin makita sa lower. Okay, generally felt by most people indoors and outdoors. Many people, many sleeping people are awakened. Some are frightened. Some run outdoors. Strong shaking and rocking felt throughout the building and hanging objects swing violently. What else? Yan, as you can see in the pictures, nagkaroon na ng masyadong damage sa mga properties. Okay, dining utensils clatter and clink. Some are broken. 
small, light, and unstable objects may fall or overturn. Liquid spill from filled open containers, standing vehicles rock noticeably, and the shaking of leaves and twigs of trees are noticeable. How about intensity? 6. So this is very strong. Many people are frightened, many run outdoors, some people lose their balance, motorists feel like driving in flat tires, heavy objects or furniture move or may be shifted, small church bells may ring, wall plaster may crack. Okay, what else? So, kapag very strong, very old or poorly built houses and man-made structures are slightly damaged through well-built structures are not affected. Limited rock falls and rolling boulders occur in hilly to mountainous areas. And uh, escarpments, trees are noticeably shaken. Yan, sobrang, sobrang nararamdaman na talaga sa part na to. Okay, and how about intensity 7? So, this is very destructive. At ito yung nakakatakot na kasi masyado ng mataas ito. Okay, at you, as you can see, yan yung mga gumuguhan ng bahay. Most people are frightened and run outdoors. People find it difficult to stand in upper floors. Heavy objects and furniture overturn or topple. Big church bells may ring. Old or poorly built structures suffer considerably damage. Some well-built structures are slightly damaged. Yan. Okay, some cracks may appear on dikes, fish ponds, road surface, or concrete hollow block walls. Limited liquefaction, lateral spreading, and landslides are observed. Trees are shaken strongly. And when we say liquefaction, this is the process by which loose saturated sand loose trend during an earthquake and behave like liquid. Now, let us have the intensity 8. So, when we say intensity 8, this is very destructive. People are panicky. People find it difficult to stand even outdoors. Many people or many well-built buildings are considerably damaged. Concrete dikes and foundation of bridges are destroyed by ground settling or toppling. Rail uh, the railway tracks are bent or broken. Tombstones may be displaced, twisted, or overturned. So, mas, mas malupit na ito dito sa ano, intensity 7. Of course, kasi this is very destructive at napakadami ng infrastructure ang maaring masira. How about intensity 8 pa rin? Okay, so very destructive. Just like, uh, ayan, very destructive. Still, nandito pa rin tayo sa intensity 8. As you can see in this picture, nagka-crack na yung mga grounds. Tapos, ayan, nagtutumbahan na rin yung mga puno and all. So, utility posts, towers, and monuments may tilt or topple. Water and sewer pipes may be bent, twisted, or broken. Liquefaction and lateral spreading cause man-made structure to sink, tilt, or topple. Numerous landslides and rock falls occur in mountainous and hilly areas. Boulders are thrown out from their positions, particularly near the epicenter. Fissures and falls rupture may be observed. Trees are violently shaken. Water splash or slop over dikes or banks of rivers. So, nakakatakot na itong very uh, intensity A kasi it is very destructive at talaga kung kailangan umuwas ka sa mga may mga matutumbahang may mga, tu may mga matutumbang bahay poste at malalaking puno. Now, how about intensity 9? So, intensity 9 this is re really uh, alarming because this is this devastating. Okay, people are forcibly thrown to ground. Yan, kahit hindi ka kusa ka ng nalalaglag o kusa ka na dyang uh, natutumba. Many cry and shake with fear. Kasi ramdam na ramdam nyo talaga yung paggalaw ng paligid nyo. So, most buildings are totally damaged. Bridges and elevated concrete structures are toppled and destroyed. So, kaya kapag ganyan yung nararamdaman mo ng sobrang taas na ng intensity, so, kailangan talaga aalis ka sa mga building na pwedeng gumuho. Okay? Numerous utility posts, towers, and monuments are tilted, toppled, or broken. Water sewer pipes are bent twisted or broken. Landslides and liquefaction with lateral spreadings and sun boils are widespread. The ground is distorted into an 
undulations. Trees are shaken very violently with some toppled or broken. Boulders are commonly thrown out. River water splashes violently or slops over dikes and bumps. So this is really bad. Intensity 9. Devastating. And the last one is intensity 10, which is completely devastating. Yeah, as you can see in the picture, parang ang hirap ng bumangon ulit kapag ganito yung nakita natin sa paligid na sobrang damage na lahat ng properties, nagbagsakan na lahat ng mga buildings, puno, at yung mga bahay talagang natabunan na ng mga malalaking buildings na malapit sa paligid. So ayan, as you can see in intensity 9, uh, intensity 10, sorry. Intensity 10, this is completely devastating. Practically, all man-made structures are destroyed. So, walang pinipili. So, ito na yung pinakamalakas or pinamataas na intensity ng lindol na lahat ng nakikita mong structures ay talaga totally damaged. Okay, ayan. Massive landslides and liquefaction, large-scale subsidence, and uplift of landforms and many ground features are observed. So, sobrang... Sobra talaga yung damage niya, no? Nagkaroon na rin ng landslide. Okay, yan. Massive landslide and liquefaction, large-scale subsidence and uplift of landforms, and many ground fissures are observed. So, pati yung mga daanan, talagang gumubuho na siya. Kasi nga, uh, yung kung baga solid talaga siya nung una, pero since nagkaroon nga siya ng movement sa ilalim, so nagkaroon na rin ng liquefaction kung, kung saan naging parang tubig na rin yung ilalim niya. Kaya ang bilis-bilis niya mag-overflow yung lupa. Okay, changes in river courses and destructive uh, sieges in large lakes occur. Many trees are toppled, broken, and uprooted. Here is a short timeline of some of the world's deadliest major earthquakes in the last 10 years. September 19, 2017 at Mexico. A 7.1 magnitude quake hit central Mexico, killing at least 369 people, causing more devastation in the capital than any since the 1985 earthquake that killed thousands. August 24, 2016 at Italy. A 6.2 magnitude quake strikes a cluster of mountain communities 140 kilometers or 85 miles east of Rome in central Italy, killing about 300 people. April 16, 2016 at Ecuador, a devastating magnitude 7.8 earthquake smashes Ecuador, killing more than 650 people along the country's ravaged Pacific coast. On April 25, 2015, Nepal, a magnitude 7.8 earthquake ravages impoverished Nepal, kill, killing nearly 9,000 people and disrupting the lives of more than 8 million people. August 3, 2014 at China, a magnitude 6.3 earthquake devastates southwestern China, killing at least 600 people in a remote area of Yunnan province. September 24, 2013 at Pakistan, twin earthquakes measuring 7.7 .7 and 6.8 magnitude strike Pakistan's southwestern Balochistan province, killing at least 825 people. At August 11, 2012, Iran, two strong earthquakes measuring 6.4 magnitude and 6.3 respectively kill at least 300 people near the city of Tabriz in northwestern Iran. On October 23, 2011, at Turkey, a powerful magnitude 7.2 earthquake shakes southeast Turkey, killing more than 600 people. In Japan, on March 11, 2011, a 9.0 magnitude earthquake and tsunami strikes Japan's northeast, killing about 15,690 people and injuring 5,700. The earthquake also triggers the world's biggest nuclear disaster since Chernobyl in 1986. 
February 22, 2011 at New Zealand, a 6.3 magnitude earthquake hits Christchurch, killing at least 180 people and causing an estimated of 15 billion New Zealand dollar of damage. February 27, 2010 at Chile, an 8.8 magnitude quake and subsequent tsunami in Chile kill more than 500 people and cause some 30 billion in damage, wrecking hundreds of thousands of homes and mangling highways and bridges. January 13, 2010, Haiti, a 7.0 magnitude quake devastates Haiti's capital, Port Au Prince, and kills about 316 people. The United Nations estimates that 80,000 buildings in Port Au Prince and surrounding areas were destroyed. May 12, 2008, China. About 87,600 people are killed in Sichuan province after a 7.8 magnitude earthquake hits the region. This is the end of our discussion in Science 8 for this week. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from me. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 8. This is me again, Teacher Tim May. Hanggang sa muli. See you on my next vlog. Bye!